Good morning, everybody. Sorry for the slight delay. Um, had a little bit of technical difficulties, but I'm ready. I hope you are. I hope everybody had a um, great weekend. I had um, a good weekend. And are we ready? We're going to be working on this section right here, which is supposed to be where the needle comes down. And um, we're going to be doing two different methods for doing flying geese. Um, one is the traditional method and the other is the non so not so traditional method but if you need a lot of flying geese and this the, the second method is the way to go okay um, I have traditionally I, I normally would lay out the block with all the fabric but um, I went ahead in the um, interest of saving a little bit of time and did some of the blocks some of the portions or I should say parts um, just to get through this part because there's a lot of piecing in this block but um, so this is what we're working on I've got two oranges uh, two different red fabrics we've got our white fabric for the background um, I think this is only the second time so far that we've used the background fabric we have our gray and we have a pink so let's get right to it for step one um, just a reminder just in case you um, this is what we did last week so if you need any help with any of these parts just message me um, after the video it'll be on YouTube so you can uh, comment there and I will be happy to answer your questions okay let's go all right the first step oh again sorry um, you all you need again as usual the same thing that we've been using you can use your rotary cutter but I find it's just as easy to use a scissor so a scissor a marking pen I use friction um, which works really well for me and a small ruler um, most of us or a lot of us I should say have the row by row rulers and they work perfectly for this because um, you're not doing big long lines okay first part um, is yeah is this one okay so we're doing two flying geese like this this is the traditional method all right with your orange and your red so basically you have a rectangle and you have two squares the squares for those of you who want to make a, uh, a flying geese in different sizes traditionally you have your rectangle which would be as big as the piece that you actually want your finished flying geese to be and your two squares are um, uh, not half they're over half the size of your rectangle usually by at least a half an inch so whatever the rectangle is divide that by two and add a half inch and that's usually a good place on average to start with a flying geese if you're trying to make a flying geese in a different size or any size that you want I still recommend um, you know using some scrap fabrics and testing it out and making sure it's the look that you want but that's basically the math you can make a flying geese in any size you just have to know I mean if you're trying to put a flying geese in a in a quilt and you want to put them in the border and you want the border to be four and a half inches wide well you know the rectangles got to be four and a half inches wide traditionally it is divisible by two so if it's four and a half inches wide you're going to do two and a half roughly in your height so in this case um, our figures are two and a half by four and a half okay I hope that makes sense um, and the squares are two and a half by two and a half. Usually, a good reference is whatever your height of your rectangle, that's your square. It's pretty simple. Um, if 
One more example. Let's say I wanted to make a um, flying geese, blah, 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 flying geese in a, in a border that was six and a half inches wide. So I would traditionally start off with a four and a half by six and a half inch rectangle and my squares on each side to finish the uh, flying geese would be four and a half by four and a half, the height of your um, rectangle. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have problems with it, um, just message me. Flying geese, uh, some people have problems with them. They're afraid of them. They don't like them, but they're traditionally very, very simple. So here's my rectangle. I've got a line going from this corner to this corner on the um, square and hopefully you can see that with no problem. I am going to sew just a thread length on this side of the line. Um, and like I've said before, I do that traditionally because when I flip and fold up the triangle, I find that it, it matches the top and evens out much better than sewing directly on the line. Now hopefully everybody can hear me. Hey, Kathy, I see that you're watching. Can you just let me know that you can hear me with no problem? Hey, Kathy, I see that you're watching. Can you just let me know that you can hear me with no problem? Sorry about that. I don't want the feedback. I'm assuming she can hear me because I heard the feedback. All right. So we've sewn our line. Now, as always, you're going to set the seam and flip and iron it over. I highly, especially on this block, recommend best press when we get to all of these tiny um, flying geese. It's really going to help you when you're working with small pieces, not to um, have the fabric stretch on you. And then we're just going to cut. Once you know that it flips and it lines up, then you can just cut the bulk, which is roughly a, a quarter inch seam allowance doesn't have to be exact. If you feel more comfortable using your rotary cu cutter and ruler, by all means, go ahead. Whatever makes you feel more comfortable. Now, we've got one half of our flying geese done. And we're going to put the other square on. Now, you do these squares separate without laying both of the squares on at the same time because they have to overlap. So if we sewed both of these to at this, you know, with both blocks squares down um, it wouldn't line up well because the top square is meant to overlap the bottom to form your flying geese again we're gonna sew just a th scant thread thread length thread width I should say on the other side of that line so we're gonna sew on this side of the line from corner to corner. There you see we've sewed it. Once we iron it, 
and flip it, it'll be a flying geese. I really like flying geese. I know some people don't, but I think they're extremely uh, interesting in a quilt. You could make a really amazing border. Does it take a little bit more time? Absolutely. But it's worth it when you've done with your quilt. There's two of our flying geese. Can you imagine having a border going all the way around a quilt with these? I, I like them. They really aren't that difficult. And when I go to the next method to show you how to do flying geese, you are going to love it. And hopefully you can see that with no problem. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. All right, I'm gonna sew these together just so that I can more easily show you what it's going to look like. Now, an important, important thing for you to know, and I'm going to try and show this to you. Where the flying geese intersect, you have a point. When you stitch these two together, and maybe if I can draw the line, it'll be a little bit easier for you to see. You don't want to cross over your point. What I mean is you don't want to sew on the good side of the triangle because then that defeats the purpose of having a flying geese. You'll cut off the point on your triangle. So I hope you can see that. So I am sewing on this side of the triangle that's created in the flying geese uh, over on that side of the thread. And that way I will guarantee that I don't cut off the point of my triangle. And this is typically, I sew this with a scant quarter of an inch sometimes even less it it's easier to clean up and cut off and even up blocks afterwards and i think it looks a lot better than cutting off the point and then I'll show you exactly what I mean. Okay. By sewing a scant quarter of an inch, as you can see, you can actually see your point here in your flying geese, and I didn't cut it off. That's important. If you were to cut it off, it just won't look as good. And if you're going to do all the work for flying geese, you want it to look good. Um, let's see which way we're doing this scene. Right. We're doing the scene. towards the points. So you want the seam going that way. Okay, one part done. Now, Okay, the next part, again, is making your line through your square, your white square. Whoops. 
what we're doing is we're making this. So, and we're making two of them, both going the same direction. From this corner to this corner is your line, and you are going to sew, um, yeah, towards this corner, just on the other side of the line. You can't see it, but I've sewn on the line. Now we're going to iron and flip. There you go. I'm going to cut off the excess. And now we have two. And the next part. is the same exact thing but this time we're using the white as the rectangle and the orange as the square and this one you're going to sew on this side of the line when your machine decides to work. So, is everybody getting excited for row by row? I have a lot of work to do, but it's starting to come together slowly. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Have you seen some of the rows out there? We're just setting the scene and flipping it over. in a while just decides it doesn't want to work okay there we are and all I have left to do is to cut the bulk off from the corner has anybody seen some good rows I've seen a few a um, few here in Florida that I really like and Western New York and all over the country Okay, now the next step is going to be the, the uh, second method for um, um, actually, I'm sorry, one more thing first. Don't mind me. We got one more of those just like we did with the orange. And we are going to sew on <laughs> this side of the line, just a thread width. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah. I, t 
told you this one is going to have a lot of sewing. There's a lot of piecing to this part. Alright, again, we just sewed it and it flips perfectly, nice and even. So we're going to set the seam. Now for those of you who may not know, the reason we set the seam is most of us piece with um, cotton thread. I piece with Egyptian cotton thread, which helps cut down on the fluff in your machine that build up. Um, with the cotton, if you set the seam, which is just ironing over the seam real quick once before you actually flip it, it will expand the thread a little bit. And when you do flip it and use um, starch, you will get a nice, crisp, clean seam. There we go. Or I should say, layer. there you go. Okay, now the, the fun method. All right, now, you're gonna have a bigger gray square, square to start. You're gonna put two of the white small squares on opposite corners and draw a line through all of the corners down the center. Then you're gonna sew a scant quarter of an inch on each side of that line. Now I'm gonna draw on this just so that you can see the lines a little bit where I sewed. Now we're gonna do this, you get two chances at this, because we're gonna be doing it, right now we're working on the needle part, which is the gray and white, but then we're gonna also work on the kind of shaft part, which is the red and the orange. So, hopefully you can see that. The line going down the center is my line that's going through all of the corners, but from the gray corner at the top to the gray corner at the bottom and through the two white small squares. The arrows point to where I sewed a quarter of an inch on each side or a scant quarter, it's fine. Okay, so now what you have to do, once you do that part, then you have to cut them down the center line that you created. And we're gonna have two separate units now. There you go. Now we're gonna iron these up. You're gonna set them and iron them up. You should have four white squares. Four white squares that are small and one large gray square. It can be a little tricky when you're folding this up, flipping it up with those little pieces. Just go slow and make sure you get them up correctly and they don't go wonky on you. Yes, wonky is a technical term. So, we have this piece here. Actually, you have two. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, Suzanne. Thank you for telling me. So, holding it a bit lower. How's that? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now we have these two pieces. Now, what we're going to do is take the white squares that we've been using 
and you're going to put it in the only corner left on the gray units just like that you've already if it's easier for you to do a line on the white going from corner to corner first that's fine whatever makes it easy for you and these are right sides together if I didn't say so already And now you're going to sew just a scant quarter of an inch on each side of that line like we've been doing. Oh, good, Suzanne. Thank you. Sometimes I forget where the camera is, and it seems a lot wider than it, than it is. All right. And you can chain piece these without um, too much issues. You just got to be careful because you've got a lot of jagged um, pieces. So you don't want to get them caught in your machine wrong. Or if you're using a quarter inch foot with a guide, um, you might flip them a little bit. So just take your time. So, we've put our extra piece on, our extra square, and we've sewn a scant quarter of an inch on either side of the line. Now we're going to cut them apart. Again, you can just cut them with a scissor. And it's cut right on that line that you've already drawn. And again, we're going to set our seams and iron them up and we should have four itty bitty flying geese. Now you're going to have one more chance, opportunity to, to do this part with the orange and the red. So if you didn't get it this time, you can pause or rewind and go back, but we're going to do it again with two more fabrics. Now I will warn you, these pieces are small, so I used a lot of best press to try and keep them straight. Are they going to be perfect? No. Probably not. Um, when you're working with tiny pieces, sometimes it's very, very hard to keep everything straight. There are some women, or quilters in general, I should say, that thrive on small piecing. I'm not one of them. Um, so thankfully, uh, there weren't too many small areas on this one. Now, this is one time where I will, again, be cutting my little dog ears off because they're just so small. I really don't want to add anything else to this if I can help it. Is there anybody out there that likes to do that really tiny piecing? I know we've got a few customers that come into the shop that thrive on mini quilts. I got to give them a lot of credit because that's just too small for me. A while back I posted about the um, Washington 
Smithsonian um, and posted pictures and a video I believe of the little tiny quilts for the dollhouses and stuff little mini quilts that were amazing okay I'm gonna clean up my little mess of confetti and then we'll be ready for the next part all right now just so the um slow all of these small flying geese together one right on top of the other and watch your point again because you don't want to um, cut off your point so if you have to sew most likely a scant quarter of an inch and keep an eye on your point that's fine I find working with small pieces to be sometimes difficult so I'm gonna warn you ahead of time we're gonna we can clean this up a little bit you can trim it up once you're done and before you piece it to your other portion of the blocks so don't fret too much over it now I'm just going to set these seams and iron them up why it keeps on um, going back and not staying on the video I hate when that happens <laughs> all right this is meant to be fun believe it or not I know some of you are sitting there and saying no 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 but yes this is meant to be fun so have fun with it don't sweat the small stuff everybody learns um how to do something for the first time so you're always going to get better and better and better and if i can help you in any way making it just a little bit easier let me know So now we just got to uh, sew these two together. And again, so you're going to use a scant quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less. It depends on um, how good your seam allowance is. You just don't want to cut off the points. I didn't get as close as I'd like, so I'm just going to do it again. cool is that 
I have to admit, this is probably some of the most teeniest um, piecing I've done in a long time. Okay, you should have one more rectangle, which is almost the same size as your flying geese. And you're going to sew that to the bottom, right sides together. So it's going to be sewn right here. And then that part is done. And we get to do the other flying geese. just gonna uh, set the theme again I hope I'm not sounding too much like a broken record and flip okay now can you see right here where I came out just a little bit further that's okay when I square and straighten this up and cut just that tiny bit off, I'm still gonna have plenty for a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm not worried about it. Okay, now we're gonna do this twice. Two more times. Like we've started already, we've got our big red square and we've got our smaller orange squares on opposite corners I've drawn a line going through the center of all of them from corner to corner and then you stitch a scant quarter of an inch on each side of the line and then now we're at the point where we're just going to cut on the line and create our our two individual pieces these are a little bit bigger than the gray ones that we just did Whoops. It's a daisy. Okay. Now we've got to flip the triangles up in the, the orange triangles up. And we're going to do it again with our final square. So now, I think um, there is something out there, and I'll see if I can find it and post it for you, which gives you figures um, for how big to make the square, uh, the, the initial, the larger square, and how big to make the smaller squares. Um, so that if you have to make a lot of these flying geese, and you want them a specific size, uh, it, it's a chart that says, exactly what to cut um so between today and tomorrow i'll see if i can find it and post a link to it and see if that helps you especially if you want to do like i said uh, all the flying geese in a border you're going to be making an awful lot and even if you didn't want to do the border on all four sides you could do it on just the two sides or the top and the bottom um and it'll create a really cool look. I like when you do the border and, you know, do it differently than just a plain border. It, I think it adds a lot to the quilts. Looks, looks like we got a little heart. It's a little wonky heart, but we got a little heart. So now we have four pieces like this. And I didn't draw my lines. Sorry about that. I forgot. So now on the four remaining small blocks, 
I'm going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. Now, this is the unit that we have, and you're going to put your final square, just like, uh, yeah, I had to think for a minute, <laughs> just like that. And you're going to sew a scant quarter on either side of the line. Once we cut that out, each one of these units will have two flying geese. So we're actually making eight flying geese pretty quickly. It may not sound quickly because I'm trying to explain as we go, but once you get this method down, it's pretty quick. And I will be chain piecing this just because I have so many. one half done now I'm just gonna pull them around so they're all nice and connected pull them around put my thread under and do the other side As far as where you're sewing, a uh, nice little reference point is if you're sewing down, you see the valley right here that's created by the top square and your half of flying geese? That's where you're, you should be aiming for. So if you do that, when you flip them over, they'll line up perfect. Now all I have to do is cut them apart. Cut down the center and iron them and we'll have eight flying geese. All I'm going to do is cut on the line. And we'll have a bunch of little flying geese. So this weekend, I actually did a house call and worked with a very nice young lady on her multi-needle embroidery machine. Um, I do a lot of embroidery classes, but it's not like you can bring 
a 10 needle or a 15 needle very easily to the shop. Uh, it would be kind of hard because those things are heavy. So I actually went to her home and walked her through a few things on the machine, which is kind of fun. Anybody else do anything fun this weekend? Almost done. I probably could have sewed these together beforehand, but I decided not to. Just to make sure you guys Anna got a chance to actually see it, this new method more than once. It's not really a new method, it's just an additional method. Now I got a whole bunch of flying geese. Again, I'm gonna cut off the dog ears. I don't always do this, but with these small pieces, um, it just, it's a little bit easier. A lot of the times I leave the dog ears in and they actually act as reference point on where I should be stitching. And they help me, believe it or not, line up my fabrics. Most of the time, the dog ears aren't going to be, especially when you're dealing with larger pieces, aren't going to be adding any bulk, really. But when we're dealing with these small pieces, it is um, better to be safe and not deal with the added bulk and have those little dog ears possibly getting in the way. On bigger pieces, I actually like to keep them in. It cuts down on time, saves me a little bit of time, and it really does help um, help me piecing them together and aligning them up. We might have the opportunity to do that, maybe not, um, in further other classes, but, and I can show you exactly what I mean, hopefully, with the door ears. Okie dokie. Now we're just going to sew them all in a row. And again, just watch your points. Try very, very hard not to cut your points off. And what I mean by points is this point down here. Okay? And to do that, don't stitch when you've got them together don't stitch over this line on this side make sure you're over the line up here even if you have to do a scant quarter of an inch or a little bit less you don't want to go through all the trouble of making great flying, flying geese and then cut off the point And I am going to um, chain piece these because there's a lot of them. also recommend when you're doing this take your time with your seams meaning 
when you're going on the seams that are going under the machine you got seams going one way you got seams going the other way take your time even if you have to lift up your presser foot um, to make sure the seams stay flat with all this small piecing if they're not flat it will create a bump All right, I might have come close to a couple of the points, but I think they're going to be good. So now we're going to open them up and sew these four pieces together. This one is, this video is going to be a little bit longer than some of the others, but I tried to do as much prep work as possible for you so that it wasn't too monotonous. We're almost in the home stretch to put this block together now. Now we just got to sew these all together. Make sure they're all going in the same direction. So all the points are going down. done again I'm gonna iron these put these two halves together and we're it's time to put this block completely together I have a tendency when I'm ironing these flying geese is to iron the seam away from the point and I'll show you that in just a second if you iron it onto the point you're just creating creating unnecessary bulk that you really don't need oh and see one of my seams is not pretty not necessarily a big thing but on this small piecing it um, could give you issues This is what I mean by a s iron the seam in the direction of the point. If you iron it down, you're creating a lot of bulk right there, and it's a, a little bit more difficult to sew them together without hitting like a speed bump. All right, one more thing to sew together. The rest of these, this is a lot of little flying geese. And then we can put the block together.
it out. Remember what I told you. It, it's You have to be a lot better than me to make sure these all line up. But there is give in this flying geese unit. So you can straighten these up without an issue. Um, and I will do that just to make sure they're somewhat straight. Just to give myself a little bit of easier time. That's all I cut off to straighten them. That's it. Not a lot. do the same thing with the gray one Now, let's put the black together. I'm all full of threads. Okay, well, let's see if I can lay this out for you. Now this one's going to be a little tricky to make sure that we get everything put together. There's going to be a little fudging going on because there's an awful lot of seams in here. Hopefully you can see that good. So this one is definitely longer than we need. When you sew um, this many seams together in a small area and um, you know your quarter inch seam allowance isn't perfect, this is going to be bigger. It's going to eat up a lot more uh, fabric. That's okay. We're going to line this one up here and we're going to cut off the excess that we don't need so that when we piece it, we piece it well and it'll all fit together like a puzzle. So, what I recommend This is how I recommend putting it together. I'm going to sew this to this, this to this, so this one to this one, this, uh, this one to this one, this one to this one, and then to that one. And then you'll have four, three, quart, three pieces, larger pieces that will be able to sew together easily.
just going to sew all of our nice long line of geese together. And I always sew it with the point up towards me so you can see where your line is and where your point is. Now, I'm just going to sew this one to this one. Don't worry about it being bigger here or it being bigger here. Um, we can get rid of the extra white down here. It's not that big of a deal. So I would line it up with the red. And have my extra at the bottom. this one let's just put the seam towards the red away from the flying geese when you sew it together um, you need to add extra bulk on those flying geese they're already going to be bulky I did it wrong nothing new there hey everybody is not perfect because I wasn't thinking all right take me a second just to undo this now you know what not to do <laughs> don't sew them together a long way uh, on the short side they need to be go together long ways No, you, no way I can go through one of these videos without having at least one boo boo. There we go. Let's try that one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's go together long ways. Now, I start up here because this part is the part that I'm going to be trimming up and the second reason is this way I can stitch and go with the flow of the seams I also sew this a scant quarter of an inch just so I don't mess up the flying geese too much if you do a full quarter you run the risk of cutting into those side points just go slow it's gonna be a little bit bulky
My poor machine, you can hear it going over all those seams. the seam and flip mm. they're not perfect <laughs> but it's better done than perfect the red and the white side on top when you flip your seam. Um, that way the seam will not bulk up on the flying geese side. All right, there we go. And this is the part that we're gonna cut off I'm not really worried about it. We can square it up afterwards. If someone knows, I'm just going to trim this little bit right here off to even it up. Um, some of my customers that do a lot of tiny piecing, um, this is not super easy especially when you're doing this many together. Is it gonna be perfectly straight? No, but I'm okay with that. I'd rather have fun and get it done and have it, than have it be perfect. Because if you gotta unstitch all your seams constantly, um, it's gonna take you a lot longer. All right, now we're gonna sew this one to this one. Again, watch your point. The rest of the blocks aren't too bad after this one. We've got one more spot where there's a lot of little half good triangles that we're gonna be doing. Um, as far as tiny pieces. But the rest of it is gonna go to together a lot faster. All right, set the scene. Put the non-flying geese part on top before you flip. That way your seam will go away from your flying geese. <sighs> now we're gonna sew this part to this part, then I'm gonna sew this part to this part and piece both of these together. We're almost there, almost in the home stretch. On both of these pieces, keep your whole white rectangles on top when you go to set the seam. That way when you flip, the seam will be towards the white. It's almost impossible in this quilt for you not to see um, some seams behind the white, but you gotta pick your battles. It's a matter of seeing the seam or potentially making more bulk in the connections of uh, the other pieces.
Okay. Actually, I lied. <laughs> Sorry. Ay, ay, ay. On this piece, we want this seam going the other way. It's just going to make it easier when we're putting these angle seams together like we did the la last week. Um, if the seams are going opposite directions, then you can nest it a little bit better. lot of seams in this quilt. A lot. Alright, there we go. Now, we're going to put this piece to this piece before we add them up here. While doing this, I don't care so much about the bottom being even as much as I care about these seams matching. Because you want that angle to stay an angle and you don't want it a zigzag, if that makes sense. No, normally, and I didn't put it out there, this would be a good opportunity to use water-soluble thread. Just temporarily stitch this piece, these pieces together so that you know um, it'll work. But we're going to wing it. And I'm thinking if you do line up the bottom, it should give you the right seam. Basically, another way to do this is you've cut a quarter of an inch seam here and you've cut a quarter of an inch seam here. If you start with both of those quarter of an inch pieces lining up, it should I don't want to cross my fingers, line up so that the angle will continue. And if you use water soluble thread or a large basting stitch, I just happen to like water soluble thread. But for now, I'm going to lengthen my stitch just to make it easier in case it's not right to get it undone. Cross your fingers. Ah, perfect. Okay, now I can. Yes, I did say perfect. I was happy with that one. Now I can change the thread length, stitch length back to what it should be and restitch the seam. All of these angles, I think, are probably the hardest part of this whole quilt. And they're not easy, but if you're persistent and you do the couple of easy tips that I've already explained with the water soluble or a large basting stitch, it will cut down on your aggravation level. And I'll show you what I mean by my version of perfect. It's pretty, pretty, pretty close. And I'm okay with that. So the whole idea is you want that angle to stay one continuous line as much as possible. You don't want it to be too far off because if you are, it'll be noticeable. You know, you don't want like a zigzag. 
Now we can sew this one to this one. And again, we've got that one angle here to deal with. So let's see if we can get that angle down. Okay, I'm gonna be pretty happy with that one, I think. Sometimes I will just put a pin roughly where I will line them up roughly where the quarter inch would be and flip them. That'll give you a good idea that you're in the right spot or not. Sorry, it's not very technical, but just to be safe, I'm gonna increase my stitch length again. So if I'm wrong, it'll be a lot easier to pull them apart. exactly where I want to be but I think I'm going to undo it just move it slightly it's not bad but Try it again. better okay I'm gonna change my stitch and we sew over it you have to pick your battles what I mean is if you're okay with it then that's fine if you have to redo it three four or five times then I think you need to Figure out what looks the best and just let it go. Um, I don't want anybody getting frustrated. You shouldn't, it, this shouldn't be that frustrating by any means. And if you need help, let me know. It's supposed to be fun. Now, is this one perfect? By any means, no. But it's close enough. Close enough that you're not going to see too much break in that angle. And that's the important part. If you can get it close enough, you'll be fine. All right. Now, we just have to sew these two pieces together. The only place that you have another angle to deal with 
um, is right here. So we don't want to cut off our point too much and we want this piece to just kind of go into the arms. Um, so what does that mean? That means that you've got this gray, needle, this gray flying geese seam going this way and you've got the pink and white seam going the other way. It is more important to make sure those two seams line up then worry about any extra you may have on the top or the bottom. As long as those two seams line up, you're golden. And by nesting the seams with both, you know, the one seam going one way and one seam going the other way, it will match and you won't have any issues. So I put a pin there. And I'm gonna put one pin up here where I'm starting. Now, I'm going to iron, I mean, so this one with the points are flying geese down just because most of my seams are going that way and that's why I pinned it so I know I'm not going to be um, off, but going through the machine, it's going to be a little bit easier with all of those seams going with my sewing, not against it. I hope that makes sense. Perfect. Uh, not so perfect. Okay, one spot that I'm just going to fix because I've been telling you not to cut off your little points and I went and cut one of them off. It's a really easy to fix. All I'm doing is, this is where I, see here? It's just a little bit too much of the point that's been cut off right here. So all I'm doing is just, I'm not even unstitching the whole thing. I'm only going to unstitch where those two points are. Adjust my fabric to one side, either one, either the top, the, the actual flying geese part, or the other piece. I have a little hole now. All I want to do is just readjust the fabric. And re-stitch. This is where a scant quarter of an inch would be good. Most of the time when I'm dealing with prairie points, I am almost always sewing a scant quarter of an inch. Much better. Okay. Let's iron this. Set your seam. Flying geese on the bottom. All those little flying geese are on the bottom. So that when I flip it, I'm not adding any more bulk to the flying geese that are already going to be pretty bulky as they are. Alright, that's three. Straight thread. Here we go. Now, I'm gonna remind you, don't sweat the small stuff. This is an awful lot of piecing in this one block, which means it's a lot of seam allowances. Um, oh, 
baloney. Okay. I'm going to end up fixing this because this seam, when I put it together, should be up here, which is simple. It's just unstitching it and adjusting it up. Not a big deal. But that's what I mean. There's a lot of seams in here. A lot. Um, if you're not 100% accurate in all of your cutting and 100% accurate in your seam allowance, you're going to have uneven pieces. Don't freak out. Don't let it get to you. It's not a big deal. Um, there is a lot of forgiveness in this quilt, meaning we can trim it up a little bit here, trim it up a little bit there, and it's still going to be beautiful once you put all the pieces together. So please don't let it get to you. Don't um, agonize over it. Just have some fun with it. And unless anybody has any other questions, when I come back next week, this will be fixed, I promise. I told you, I'm not perfect, and I don't claim to be perfect. Uh, I made quite a few mistakes when I first did the original one, and I tried to make sure that I don't make the mistakes with you guys so that you know what you're doing. But it's okay. Everybody's going to make mistakes, and if you can learn from my mistakes, then you're going to have one step further along than most. Does anybody have any questions? If not... I hope everybody has a wonderful day and uh, I'm going to do some work on some kids and I'll see you later. You know where I am if you need me. If you have any questions, you can post comments to Facebook um, and the video will be posted to YouTube shortly after the video is done. All right, everybody. Have a great week. Talk to you later.